I grew up reading a lot of mysteries. When I was a kid, I was a huge fan of Nancy Drew mystery books. Later on in life as an adult, I've found I've kind of drifted away from mystery books. I read them every once in a while, and I feel like a lot of times I find them predictable. So once in a while, I still pick them up, and then once in a while, I get a really great one. The book we're going to talk about today is called How to Solve Your Own Murder by Kristen Perrin. This book was actually also featured on uh, Jimmy Fallon did like a March Madness for books. And this book was in the final four. This book, I didn't know who it was right up until the end, which is crazy. But there is a lot of suspects in it. So you have the Castle Knoll County Fair in 1965. Three friends go to a fortune teller, have their fortunes told, and Frances Adams gets her fortune told. And the fortune teller basically is like, yeah, uh, well, you're going to be murdered. That doesn't really sit well with her. And she doesn't really say like that. It's a bit more cryptic, like, your future contains dry bones. A bird will betray you. From that, the slow demise begins right when you hold the queen in the palm of your hand. And from that, there is no coming back. Francis gets his fortune and she's like, what the F? And it becomes the focal point of her whole life where basically she's kind of obsessed with trying to figure out who might possibly murder her. So she keeps files on all of these people who might possibly be the one that kills her in the end. And so you fast forward to the future and... And she's in her either late 60s, maybe almost 70. I'm not 100% sure. But she wants to gather everyone together. And I think she was going to talk about her will. And so she contacts the uh, her niece, Annie Adams, who her mom is like this artist. And so Annie Adams is going to go meet this eccentric aunt that she's heard about. She's heard the story about the fortune teller and all that stuff. And she's going to go meet her for the first time. Well, right as she gets there, Francis is actually found dead and murdered. And so now the niece is kind of like determined to solve the mystery of who done it, but she also has to be careful because someone probably doesn't want her digging into this and might try to kill her. So it's kind of a crazy mystery trying to figure it out because it's in this small little town Everybody knows each other and it's almost kind of incestual where like everyone's dated each other and all that stuff and knows someone who's been with someone and this, that, and the other. And there's a lot of weird interconnections and the more she digs into it, the more it's like, it could be anyone. And there's so many different people, like people that worked for her, people that were her friends, people about town. And then, you know, Francis had weird suspicions about, obviously in the fortune it said the bird would betray her. So anyone who had like a bird name, she didn't like them. Like there was this one family, their last name was Crane and she kind of made their lives a bit hellish because, well, <laughs> she had this whole thing about the fortune teller and saying about a bird betraying her. So the Crane family got to take some crap because, you know, she uh, was wary. And it's a crazy story. It's super fun. It kept me guessing all the way to the end. I highly enjoyed it. This is the best mystery I have read in a long time. Hands down. I can't even name one before this that I was like, what an amazing mystery. Like, this is the best one that I've read in who knows how long. You know, maybe you've read this book and you caught on sooner than me. But honestly, I had no flipping clue. I'm not going to tell you. Or give you any hints at all, you'll have to read it yourself. So if you like mysteries and you're looking for a really good one, How to Solve Your Own Murder was pretty fantastic. I liked the writing, it was fast paced, I didn't feel like there was really any dull moments, and it's super weird too, like putting all the clues together. Like I kept thinking, oh maybe this is this, and I would just, you know, be wrong, <laughs> as I am want to be. Great read, highly intriguing, the mystery was just... Yeah, a hard one to crack. At least I thought so. I haven't talked to anyone else who's read this book, so I don't know. Like, if you've read this, let me know and tell me if you caught on. Like, or when, at what point you caught on. Like, to me, honestly, almost right up until the end when something happened. Who knows what happened, but when something happens, then you kind of figure out, well, you know who it is. I was thrown for some loops. 
because the way the writer writes it, it throws suspicion so well on certain people that you're just like, hmm. Although I, I will say one thing. There's one character in this and she's like horrible and just like a witchy woman that just is absolutely terrible. And in mysteries, it's never that person. So I always disregard that person. Maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. I'm not going to tell you. You got to read it to find out. But that's just how I usually read mysteries. I'm like, oh, the really terrible person is probably not them. They're like the red herring and they're trying to throw in your, your line of view. But the way that suspicions were cast on everyone was just fantastic. And yeah, if you are looking for a great mystery, How to Solve Your Own Murder by Kristen Perrin might just be for you. And if you are a fan of mystery books, the next video coming up will be another mystery book. So stick around, check it out. And if you had fun hanging out today, hit that subscribe button, come back, see me again, and we'll talk about more bookish things and weird stuff.